Hello YouTubers, this is James and I want to show you a problem that we're having with our Whirlpool Duet uh, dryer. It's giving an F01 message when we try and power it up and I'll just show you what that looks like. So we turn it on, select a cycle, press start. And you can see how instead of actually engaging it's just kind of stuck. Um, and then there you go, that's the F01 error. So I'm gonna pull the washer or the dryer out and uh, unplug it and take the top off. Take a look. Um, if you Google the F01 error, you're gonna see lots of results showing you that it's probably the control board. So let's take a look at that and see what we find. All right, everybody, I've got the uh, dryer pulled out. I'm gonna go ahead and um, unplug it now from the 240 uh, power source here. Make sure you do this always when you're working with anything electrical, obviously. When it comes, you can leave the uh, exhaust vent connected. Um, and next we're gonna take off this top panel it's just a matter of removing two quarter inch uh, hex head screws. So we'll do that now and uh, then I'll show you what's underneath. All right, so we've got the top off. That was just a matter of sliding the cover backwards once removing the screws and then lifting it off. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what you're going to find is that the control board lives on the uh, left hand side of the dryer as, as you're facing it. Um, under this white uh, plastic assembly. So let's uh, take this cover off and see what we have. Just a couple of clips here. There we go. And uh, this is just going to give you access to uh, have a look at how this uh, control board is mounted. And I'm going to have a look here and see if there's any screws, but I think there might not be, and we can just slide it off. It would be a good idea to take a picture of the connectors here um, so that you can connect them all correctly when you go to reinstall this assembly. All right, everyone, we've uh, taken off the uh, connectors now, took a picture first so that we can um, figure out how to put this all back together. Most, or some of the connectors anyway, pull out just straight with no clips to depress first. Uh, this one does have a couple of those kind of standard clips, you know, that you would have to push down on the top there to release that catch and then uh, pull the connector up and out um similar situation with this one right you press and then pull up to release it and then just a quick note that these connectors along the right hand side of the circuit board actually pull out to to the right i kind of pulled them up first of all because the wires are coming in vertically but they do in fact you know, pull out this way. So pull them straight out to the right, not up. And there are some little um, catches there that you have to push down first so that you can then pull the connector out to the side. And it looks like there's no more screws to deal with. We just simply have to release that green circuit board um, from that white carrier that it's kind of in. And that looks to be just a matter of um, pressing down these clips around the perimeter of the board and gently raising it out. So we'll give that a go and then take a look at that board and uh, see what we have. All right, everyone, we've got that circuit board out and it was just a matter of kind of flexing the board upward with one hand and then going around the perimeter of the uh, white carrier and releasing the, the clips as you go so that the board clears the clips and then you can move on to the next set of clips and just work your way down and just gently 
flex that board a little bit upwards and it will release from each set of clips as you go until you're done. And then you can just slide it out of that, that white carrier there. So once you've got the board free, you're, you can take a look at it and flip it over and just inspect it. And lo and behold, you can see pretty clearly where we have a problem here. You can see that burnt section. Now, full disclosure, I have taken this dryer apart before to verify that this is um, where the failure occurred, which is what a lot of the YouTube videos will show. And they will go on to say, um, order this whole control board for two, three, four hundred dollars, whatever it's going to cost you. And then just, uh, you know, reverse these steps with the new board and you should be good to go. Um, I wasn't very impressed with the price of these boards up here in Canada. They want something like four hundred dollars and they're back ordered. And uh, it does seem pretty clear where the problem is. This is a relay. Um where you can see the the uh, kind of smoke and some sort of overheating or something has occurred there with that black black markings. I tried to resolder it, but that didn't uh, fix anything, which was not really surprising. Um, but I did decide that I could probably take a look at the details of this relay right here and find one online. And I was able to find something that I believe is an exact match uh, from a place called Advanced Electronics. Shout out to them. I'll include a link on the description. And I think it was something like 20 bucks, maybe US for this part, which was a whole lot better than something like three, four hundred dollars for a back ordered control board, which is kind of criminal if you ask me. But so the idea is going to be that uh, here is the new relay. It just came. Um, you know, we're gonna obviously take it out of its bag and make sure its footprint is identical and that the pins are in exactly the same place. But, uh, it look, it looks pretty good here, just holding them side by side. So I'm gonna go down to, uh, my soldering station and it will just be a matter of, uh, you know, getting the soldering iron hot and releasing the four pins that connect this relay right here to the circuit board and replacing it with a new one. All right, more to come. All right, everybody, we're back. I've got my solder station and my soldering iron out here. And the plan will be to uh, heat up the solder on this pin, this pin, this pin, and this pin. And those are the four connections. Um, that this relay uses to connect to the board. So that's what we're gonna heat up and hopefully pull it off without incident. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, everyone, we're back and I was able to desolder the relay from the circuit board. It was a little bit of a process, unfortunately, because my soldering iron uh, crapped out on me, but I got a new one here, just a pen style one, nothing Nothing too fancy. I also have a solder sucker, they call them. So this is just like a syringe, basically, where you push down uh, to create a vacuum. And then once you've got the solder hot that you want to remove, you simply press the button and it sucks that solder up into the chamber here. And then a cool feature of this one anyway is that when you push it back down, a pin you can see that pin comes down all the way and it is gonna push out any of the solder that you sucked up. So you have, it's very easy to clean, I guess, and you can see that you've actually accomplished something because there's solder in the chamber that's then expelled. So um, you can also use desolder wire. This came with my soldering iron and I never really heard of it before, but I gave it a go and what you do is just put it right on top of the pin that you want to remove the solder from. Get everything nice and hot and it is supposed to suck up the solder into this kind of copper mesh um, that the desolder wire is made out of. So a couple of different techniques. I tried them both. Um, I think just getting it really hot. So you, I just put my soldering iron right on the pin 
Um, make sure you add a little bit of solder to the soldering iron so you get good uh, heat conduction from the iron to the pin. I know that sounds a little counterintuitive, but that is what you want to do because it's all about heat transfer, getting it nice and hot. And be ready then with your solder sucker. As soon as you remove the soldering iron, suck up the liquid solder and then move on to the next pin. And then you should get all four pins basically naked, if you will. And with a little pressure, um, you're going to be able to remove that, that relay. And you can see mine is, you can see where the damage is on that one pin, which, you know, corresponds to that black mark on the circuit board there. So now we're going to take the, uh, the new relay down here and uh, check that the pinout matches. It looks, looks good so far. And then I'll, I'll solder it uh, in place of the old broken one. Okay, let's check it out. All right, everyone, I was able to solder on the new relay. You can see that's the new one. The pinout on the bottom was identical, thank God. So it was just a matter of pushing the relay through those holes that we had desoldered and then uh, soldering them, soldering them up. The only trick I would say is I propped up the uh, circuit board on top of this cover we told we took off the control panel just so that the board was sitting on on the relay like this when I was soldering and that way uh, the the relay wouldn't want to pop out when I was soldering on it because it's not actually the deepest point on the board if you lay it flat on a surface this uh, power connector will actually be what it's on and then that will give the relay room to move down if you uh, if you aren't careful. So well, that's what I did so that the relay would stay with his uh, with his pins stuck all the way through the board as I was soldering. Then you just get the pins and the the pads uh, nice and hot and drop some solder in there and make sure it takes and. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that job. I'm not an expert, that's for sure, but looks like good connectivity. So now what we're gonna do is just put everything back together. And God willing, the uh, F01 error will have, uh, will have gone away. So like I said, that's our new relay. It's all soldered up. So I'm just gonna reverse the steps now. Put this circuit board back in to the carrier, reconnect all of the connectors, and uh, we'll probably give it a go in that configuration before we've even got the, the top on the uh, dryer, just to make sure that it, it works. So let's do that and we'll see if we've fixed the problem. All right, everyone, we've got her all back together, or at least to a point where we can test it. Um, I wanted to mention that with these connectors on the side, um, it looks like I bent the plastic clip that retains the connector down a little bit too too far. And they are not returning to their original position. So I think it's going to be fine, but it's just something to keep an eye on when you are doing this. Be gentle with these uh, little clips and don't over uh, extend them. Just bend them down just enough so that the connector head will release. But that's a lesson learned. Um... But uh, again, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. We will see. Um, the connectors sit in there pretty firm anyway, and these are isolated to some extent from the vibration as the whole board sits on this kind of cross member. So I've gone ahead and plugged the dryer back in. As you can see, I'm just going to leave it with the cover off to, to test it out and see if that F01 message appears again or not. The other thing I wanted to say was that... Uh, I was fairly confident it was a relay problem just because the F01 message was appearing when um, the wash or sorry when the dryer made its demand for higher voltage to start actually uh, rotating the drum and and uh, activating the heat. So let's see if uh, if it all works. So just got on the normal cycle here. We'll just press start. And that is a really good sign it activated right away um 
Now, when the broken relay was in here, it would sometimes start, but it would turn off, and you'd have to just keep manipulating dials and pressing start until you got, got it to go. So I won't post this video until I'm confident that uh, the fix is 100% and that it completes the cycle without needing to be restarted. But uh, it looks really good, really promising from what I can see here. So I hope this helps you out. Thanks.